Good morning. We're so pleased that you joined us on what is, we think, an absolutely remarkable occasion. Every time somebody exits homelessness and leases up into their home after uh, experiencing the uh, tragedy that is homelessness and the experience of that with their family, it is a very monumental occasion. We often talk about our work in numbers, how many lease-ups we've achieved, how many people who have exited homelessness and are housed, but for each of those individuals, for each of those families, there is a story. Um, and so we are very excited to be embarking on what we're calling a Home for the Holidays campaign. Our mayor and our city council have appropriated unprecedented resources to help people exit homelessness and have a home of their own. In order to do that, we need to find partners like Mr. Gladstone here who are willing to lease to individuals and families and give them a fresh start in life. And so we are uh, before that, um, between now and the week of New Year's, our hope is to house 400 um, individuals and families, 400 households. And so we are well, we added some soft launch, and you may have seen some of our information about that last week. We have strengthened partnerships with the business sector, with, um, with landlords in the community, and we're very excited to be, um, to, to be working fast and furious toward that goal because as, we know everybody uh, deserves a safe and stable place that is home from which to thrive. I could also not be more pleased um, to thank my staff who are here, who have been a part of this, our partners at the Community Partnership, and again, um, landlords. I want to um, congratulate Ms. Anderson and her family, and you will hear from her shortly. And without further ado, I'm going to um, also want to acknowledge our Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services, um, a steadfast supporter and enabler of our work. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, and welcome home to the Andersons and uh, little Mr. Anderson and little Miss Anderson. Uh, and thank them for being here. I just really want to add to what Director Zeilinger has already said. Uh, that we have been very focused on how to transform our homeless services system uh, in the District of Columbia. And that system includes uh, how we avoid homelessness in the first place for families across the district with prevention services. Uh, it includes how we transform our emergency shelter system, uh, but it also includes how we exit families once they have experienced uh, an emergency, been stabilized in shelter. Uh, how can we ensure that they move into safe uh, and affordable housing? Uh, we are pleased that we have seen a 10.5% reduction uh, in homelessness across the district with more than a 22% reduction uh, in family homelessness. Uh, we've also been very focused on making sure every veteran in Washington, D.C. is getting the services that they are entitled to, and we have seen more than a 30% reduction in veteran homelessness. So the Home for the Holidays campaign is really uh, exemplifies what DHS does every single day, not just during the holidays, um, but every single month in Washington, D.C. Uh, and what we're focused on today uh, is how housing providers all over the D.C. Uh, can work with us to make sure that qualified families, deserving families, are getting uh, a, a good look by our, our housing providers. And that's what Mr. Gladstone has done. Uh, you may recall just a few weeks back, we also launched a new fund uh, that would be a, a public-private fund established uh, to uh, give uh, landlords even even more assurance that working with families who are exiting homelessness in D.C. Uh, would be uh, a very good thing for, for their business as well. So that's what we're here to celebrate. Uh, Ms. Anderson's lease signing will make 72, uh, which means we have 300 more to go. Uh, so we're asking uh, all of our housing to providers to stay in touch with D 
CHS. Um, our housing navigators are going to be reaching out uh, with families uh, who need a, a safe and, and wonderful uh, home um, for the holidays and for the rest of their lives. Uh, so I want to introduce uh, our, our newest resident, uh, Ms. Anderson, who uh, will be moving here. This is your unit? Yeah. All right. We'll be moving right here uh, with, with her kids. Uh, we are close to school and close to their daily lives, and that's a, a wonderful thing for everybody. Ms. Anderson. Thank you. Congratulations. Hello. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. I'm very excited. Happy. Kids excited. <laughs> Y'all happy? And I'm kind of shocked and like <laughs> nervous right now. That's okay. So, so why don't we, like, just, we can invite Mr. Gladstone up. Okay. And then uh, after it's over, if anybody wants to take a look or ask questions, they can do it then. Mr. Okay. Gladstone. Great Thank to meet you. you. Good morning. We applaud the mayor and our administration for placing focus and emphasis on the dire need for housing. So on behalf of Gainesville Street LLC and its owners, Saeed and Muntan Tahar, we are happy to partner with you, Mayor Bowser, in providing affordable housing to city residents. We're aware of the shortages, especially to the indigent, and we wanted to do our part in curing some of the needs. I call on other landlords who are considering the same to take a bold step forward and make a difference in the lives of individuals and families across this city. By joining hands and hearts, we can work together for endless possibilities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And, and thank you as well to the property owners for your partnership. Um, any landlord who is interested in partnering with us, which should be all people who have vacancies and want to uh, give a fresh start to individuals and families, can just um, email us at um, homefortheholidays at dc.gov, or you can also go to the DHS website at dhs.gov, and there is a link right there to our Home for the Holidays campaign. So th um, thank you so much. I think at this point we're going to go ahead and sign the lease, which then will we'll take questions. and then we'll, um, yes. <laughs> can we keep it clear so we can see, please? <laughs> How many of uh, you want 400 families, but you started soft launching earlier this month? Yes. Where are you in terms of getting the 400? So, this is our 72nd lease up today, and we're um, in, in both. We are Homer DC plan is about every resident who's experiencing homelessness. So, between that 400, we are leasing up both families and um, individuals who are not accompanied by minor children to exit homelessness with the resources that have been appropriated. Thank you. If I could follow up, when you talk about landlords having a partnership with the city government, the mayor, what what is the partnership? Are you providing technical help, 
subsidy in construction, uh, sub subsidizing the rents? Where, what is your part of the partnership? Um, so it's all of the above, but the Department of Human Services is providing rent subsidies. Um, in th some cases, that is short to medium term help with rent through our rapid rehousing program. Sometimes it is um, permanent supportive housing that is a, 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 a voucher without a time limit. And we also, in both cases, are providing the supportive services. Um, we are helping, um, we have our case managers and our staff have a, um, both email addresses as well as a 24 hour response um, or immediate response for if there are any issues that need resolution. We are, um, we are uh, working to match people appropriately uh, to any where there are vacancies available. So we're supporting that navigation process as well. So you're going to have 400, you're going to place 400 different families or individuals, 400 units, is that what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, um, we want 400 households to find a home um, bet between now and, and the beginning of the new year. Um, that is our goal as this campaign. That is, um, we have, we, um, as the mayor said, this is what we do all year long. But we know we are in the beginning of the fiscal year. We have resources available now that can support people, and we have many people who are in that um, housing search process. And we want to um, we want to uh, publicize, expedite that, so that we can get as many people um, into a home as possible uh, to celebrate the holidays with their families. What is the rent here? It's uh, uh, $1,592 dollars. One thousand five hundred ninety-two dollars a month, and uh, how much of this is the family paying? Zero. So how that, how does that work? So, um, so families move in with assistance from the district. Um, um, Ms. Anderson is working three part-time jobs, is seeking full-time employment. We are um, supporting her and her family to um, to use the housing as a foundation to be able to achieve um, the income that she will need in order to maintain her rent in the long run. And we are helping to subsidize that unit while she does it. Now, um, how much Ms. Anderson is paying is not visible to um, the landlord because we are paying on her behalf and then she is paying that rent toward her contributions she pays um, toward um, um, to to the housing authority who is the payer for DHS so no, one of the um, I would need to check I don't know that off the top of my head it but it does it oh, starts here. low it starts at a rate that is affordable that allows the family to do what they need to do in order to um, uh, help in order to be able to increase um, earnings and afford it in the long run. How much would it cost me kept her in a hotel room? So we um, pay on average about $160 a night for hotel rooms. All right. So I think that's what uh, has been demonstrated as Laura, Director Gut Zeilinger talked a little bit about, we have a number of tools um, and we can match the appropriate tool with the, the household. Uh, not every household is the same, not all, all levels of need are the same. Uh, but this is a very appropriate tool for this family. Yes, ma'am. Um, how do you guys choose who qualifies for the program? So everybody who is experiencing homelessness needs a safe and stable place that is home. So if people are, um, are experiencing homelessness in the community, we are working with them on a housing solution, and we are working with the, um, the amount of subsidy and the type of program is dependent on that individual or that household's um, needs based on assessment and based on um, our experience with them. We start most families off with a rapid rehousing subsidy to support them to build their income. And if over time they, um, it's clear that they need longer term supports, then we are bridging to those longer term supports. But we use a housing first approach in our community. We know housing and that stability of housing is the essential place from which people thrive. And so, um, so we are starting with the housing and we are building the right supports um, as people have that opportunity to achieve their aspirations from the foundation of a home. How do you work three jobs and raise two kids? <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> When you're trying to run your own business, hum Humble and Hungry is my business. We manage Marcus Dow, he's an ex-former NFL player, um, and I also clean houses. Here's my business card. <laughs> <laughs> right here. <laughs> and I can, I mean, 
I told you, and I can show you too, <laughs> how to raise two kids, being, being a single mom. And not only that, I have, I have support and help from this young man right here, Mr. Harvey Martin. And um, yes, he's been there through my struggle, helped me out a lot with my two kids, being a single mom, and we got this business up and running, going. So if y'all want business card, I can give it to you. Right. But I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy. How did you, if you feel like say, how did you happen to be in such need for housing? Were you homeless? Were you were just you're on the street? It's well, a, it's a very difficult problem for, for everyone. I became homeless after I had my first child. And um, I stayed in the D.C. General. Um, that didn't work out. Went back to my mom's house. That didn't work out. And I was just couch surfing, going from house to house, house to house. And I ran across him, Mr. Harvey Martin, and he changed my life. He showed me different ways to go in life, positive, you know. And I can honestly say I appreciate him very much. And I, I thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, Mayor, one, one final question. You, in your press release, you said that there were 7,000 homeless people in D.C. I mean, and, and this was 400. I don't know. Making a dent, I mean, how's it going? How, how would you assess this? this well, I, I started out my remarks saying uh, how our efforts over the last three years is changing things. Uh, we've seen numbers go down in terms of people coming in, uh, and homeless families coming into the system because prevention services are working. We've seen the numbers of veterans, more veterans house, uh, and, and that's significant. Uh, and we're also seeing the numbers of individuals experiencing homelessness go down. So in every category, we're making progress. It is stubborn, however, um, and we know uh, with a city with increasing housing costs, we also have to work on creating uh, more affordable housing and working with our private sector community to make that housing available uh, for people who are exiting homelessness with the assistance of the city, and so that's why we're here. Supposedly the economy is doing better. Are you seeing that here? The results of that in terms of decreasing homelessness, is that affecting the homeless picture in D.C.? Well, uh, Sam, anytime people have more jobs and more income, um, they are better able to, um, to support their families. Uh, that's why we've, we've worked a lot on the income side. You may recall that when I became mayor, we had 6,000 families that were facing the TANF cliff, which would mean they would get absolutely no assistance. Uh, in our first year, we delayed it. In our second year, we delayed that, that cliff. And in our third year, we reformed the system and we re got rid of the cliff. So we have more families uh, who will be able to focus, as you heard Director Zeilinger talk about, on training and on finding better jobs, and that's key. Um, two years ago, we also increased the minimum wage in the district. So by the year 2020, uh, families will be at $15 an hour. Uh, we're also focused on getting our residents in the types of jobs that pay sustainable incomes. That's why we created the Infrastructure Academy, where a person can average $45,000 a year in an infrastructure job in the city. Uh, so yes, our economy is good, but it's not good for everybody. Uh, and that's why we focused on the, the three programs I just mentioned. Mayor, do you want to take one moment give another plug for against the federal a tax reform bill that's going to cut housing uh, assistance? Uh, yeah, we talked last week and we're going to be talking more as we see the Senate bill shape up. Uh, we know members of the, the Congress already approved what we think is a devastating House bill, including members of the DMV delegation who would be really uh, hurt. Their folks in Northern Virginia would, would really suffer under this bill. Uh, so now we're, we have to focus on the Senate and make sh making sure the Senate doesn't do it. In particular, uh, we've talked about private activity bonds, uh, Tom, that support low-income tax credits, that support historic tax credits, and industrial revenue bonds. All of those tools, they're private sector tools 
that matched with our funding in the Housing Production Trust Fund has since 2010 helped create 9,000 units of affordable housing. It would be a devastating blow uh, to, to our efforts. In short, the best way to think about it is the $100 million that we put in the Housing Production Trust Fund uh, is leveraged by a lot of private sector dollars that will be wiped out by this deal. Thank you. Bill. Thank you. Thank you so much.